Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Today we would be discussing the problem packed digit sum. So in this problem we are given a number n and we need to express it as a sum of factorial of digits. Okay. And we need to minimize the number. Okay. So suppose we have 4, 0, 3, 2, 1. So it is told that it is a sum of 1 factorial and 8 factorial. So let us quickly check. 1 factorial added to 8 factorial is indeed 4, 0, 3, 2, 1. Okay. And if you notice again, then if you see 8 factorial added to 0 factorial is again 4, 0, 3, 2, 1. So yes, 80 as well as 18 is also an answer. There is one more answer, but still let us compare the value. Like 18 and 80 both are eligible answer, but the minimum of them is 18. So that is the value. So we need to minimize the number. So now to solve this problem, let us try to think in terms of what can be the value added. We need a sum to be achieved and it is to be made up of factorial of digits. Now what can be the factorial of digits? So the digits can be from 0 till the value 9. So we need to make up a value okay, made up of 0 till the value 9 and its factorial. Now let us move forward. Suppose we have all the factorial of from 1 to 9 itself. Okay. And 0 factorial is also equals to 1. This is not required. I will tell you why. Okay. Suppose we have a number 4, 0, 3. So just like we have in the bit representation, what we can do is we can take up the simple one and we can have 4, 0, 3, 1 and we can achieve this value 4, 0, 3. But, but, but this won't be the correct answer. Why? Because see, more the number of digits, more would be the value of the number. And we need to minimize that number. That is why by using just 0 or just 1, this won't be the answer. Yes, that would be an eligible answer, but that won't be the correct answer. Like it would sum up to 403, but that won't be the minimum value. Okay. So now the next thing that comes to our mind is we need to have, we have all the building blocks and we need to build up a number. So what we can do is if we need, if the number of digits matters and if the number of digits manipulates the size of the number, then if we start taking the big blocks, because it does not matter to us if we use one or if we use nine, it does not bother us. So why not move forward with a greater value than moving forward with a lower value? Why? Because if we move forward with a lower value, then we might need some more values. Because see, if I just tell you an example, 9, 9 is less than 1, 1, 1. So even if 1 is less than the digit 9, but still if it is more in number, that would affect the number. Let us try to build up this number. Suppose we have 403. So what is the largest block we can accommodate? We can accommodate this 5. So I would say, okay, I would use this 5 and I would subtract 120 because we need to use that. So now we would be left over with 3 and this we would left over with 8 and this we would left over with 2. Okay. Then what is the next block that we can accommodate the biggest size? We have again 5. So we would add here 5 and we would subtract 120 from it again. And then we would be left with 3, 6 and 1. Now we again have 163 and then we would again subtract this 120. So again we would have 5 and we would subtract this 120. So 3, 4 and 0. Next we have 43. Okay. So we have till this number. So now, what is the next largest building block that we can accommodate? The largest building block that we can accommodate next is 4. So we would be just having 24 and this would be 9 and this would be 90. Okay. And we would write here 4. And 
Then the next building block which can be accommodated is the value 6. So we would subtract the value 6 and we have 3 and 1. Okay, and we would write here 3 itself. Okay, now what is the next value that we can accommodate? Again, it is 6. So we would again have 6 and we would accommodate 7 itself. Okay, so we have a value 7. Now what is the next value again? Again, the value is 3. So we would accommodate 3. So now, what is the next value that I can accommodate? The next value I can accommodate is these two values. So I need to make a selection of these two values. Okay. So now see, we need just the sum. So if we have x plus y, then x plus y is same as y plus x. Both are absolutely the same. So, if we just are concerned about the sum, then instead of writing 5, 4, 3, 3, 3, we can just write here as 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5. Okay. And then which value, suppose we can add both these values and this would end, just one is remaining. So, either we can have here 0, 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5. Or we can have 1, 3, 3, 3, 4, 5, 5, 5. So, if you observe that having here 0 would disrupt the answer. Why? Because even if we provide this, then this won't be counted. Okay? Because in a number, zeros are omitted. So, we need to move forward with 1. So that the value of this also gets added. So now what we can do is, as the name suggests, we would just find the factorial of all the numbers. And we would try to find the chunk which is the largest one. And then we would keep subtracting. And then when the chunk gets lowered down, we would move forward to a lesser value. Like first what we did was, we subtracted 120. Subtract 120, subtract 120, subtract 120. We, we did the subtraction till the value remaining was less than 120. Then we move up, then we have 4, then again we subtract 24, then the value became 19 which is less than 24. Then we moved up, then 16. We kept subtracting the value 6, 6, 6 till the value remaining was greater than 6 or is equals to 6. Then we moved up, now again this value is not greater, so now we would again move up. Okay, so now instead of taking 0, we take 1 and just reverse the value, we would get that. So now, let us move to the implementation. Now, we first need to find all the factorials and we would store it somewhere. So we would simply write vector of int of f of 10 itself, okay, because we would just store the value till the 9, okay. Then we would say that f of 0 is equals to 1 to facilitate the usage of for loop for int i is equals to 1, i is less than equals to 10 and i plus plus and then we would say f of i is equals to f of i minus 1 multiplied by i itself okay this is just like the factorial of 2 is 1 multiplied by 2 factorial of 3 is factorial of 2 multiplied by 3 this is so if i just show you so see factorial of 3 is equals to 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 so we can say that 2 factorial multiplied by 3 in the same way, I can say 4 factorial is equals to 3 factorial multiplied by 4. So, previous factorial multiplied by the current value. This is what we are doing. And then we would start storing the answer in a vector of int of answer. Okay. And then we would start with the highest block. So, int i is equals to 9, i is greater than 0 and i minus minus. Okay. And then we would say that while the particular current chunk is less than equal to the value n. Okay. We would subtract the value f of 5 itself. Okay. And then we would just, if we have used that value, we would just insert that value. And then before returning, we would reverse it so that we would have the smallest value. Okay. So answer dot begin, comma, answer dot end and then we would simply return the value of answer we'll just compile and run okay we are getting a correct output for the sample test case 
Now let us submit this and see if we get an AC or not. And yes, we got an AC. Now, if you were here till this point of the solution, consider liking the video and leaving a comment even as small as possible, just like an understood or even one, okay, to increase the reach of the video. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.